Hey guys, just going to be preaching the gospel on the chat apps, just reaching the lost, um, bringing the gospel to the world, and just want to apologize. There's a lot of language and obviously nudity, so if there's any cuts or anything in the video, it's just because there was nudity and I had to cut it out, so it's just a warning, but um, yeah, I'm just going to preach the gospel to the lost and, you know, let the Holy Spirit kind of just take it, and yeah. We can be saved and we can be free in Christ, but we're running out of time. And that's why he says in John chapter 14, verse 6, that I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no man will come to the Father but by me. And it's because of what he did on the cross for us and what he's shown us. And it's for the sins of the world. And it's because no man can get to the Father because of the sins. We're all brought in through Adam, so we're all born into sin. And that's why Christ says in John chapter 3, verse 3, that we need to be reborn because it's the spirit of adoption because we're born a corruptible seed through Adam, so we're prone to sin. And that's why Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12 says that that might seem natural in a man's heart, but yet still in the end leads to death. And that's because it's just men and women choosing to go after sin. And choosing to go after evil, and we see it in the world today, is everything that Christ has shown us and prophesied about of wickedness on the rise. And even on the chat apps, and, and that's why it's different, it's the name, it's the only name given to us by which we can be saved. It's by His way we can be saved, and we can be free. And it's only by His name, it's only by His blood. God bless you, Christ is coming soon, we need to repent of our sins. This world and paganism won't do anything for us. And that's why we can just give them to Christ and be free. And be free, we're running out of time. And that's why he says in Matthew chapter 23, verse 37, he says, in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37, he says, love the Lord. They said in verse 35, one of them in the expert of the law tested him with this question, teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? And he says, love the Lord God with all of your heart, with all of your soul and with all of your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. And it's, it's who Christ is and what he showed us and what he had done on the cross for us. But Colossians 1.15 says that he's the visible image of the invisible God. Well, he loves you, so you have a lot of anger and we can see that. It is awesome because not even on the chat app can you get away from Christ, but he loves you and you'll never be able to change that and you'll never be able to deny him or disprove him and you will bow to him one day. Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So you can hate him, you can say whatever you want, but in the end he will have the final word and then that's why you're probably so miserable and then that's why you're probably on here just hating because that's what life has gotten you and then that's what happens when you deny my God and when you live in sin so you have nobody else but to blame but yourself so if you give in to Christ he will save you and you don't have to be a sad person if you're sad because you deny Christ and because you say these things and because you keep running from him and living in sin but if you give your life to him you won't have to be sad I'm, I'm sure you would but that's, I'm sure if you would say that, you would probably have sex with a lot more, which is disgusting, which says everything about your character. Because if you see, say that and you need that, you would probably have sex with a donkey, which is what says a lot for you and about you. And that's really sad because there's no self-value in you. And you have said it yourself that you're sad. And you don't have to be. You can be saved. You can stop running. And that's why you can't even get away from him on the chat apps, because he's the only name that you can't get away from. That's why they only persecute and mock him. Nobody else, not Shiva, not Buddha, not Muhammad. And that's why he's the truth. I could have said anybody else and you would have been fine with it, but because I said Jesus, you're freaking out. Because it's spiritual. There's a spirit behind you. Spirit of anger, which is demonic of this world. But you can be saved. You can be free. And you don't have to keep running from God. Yeah, a lot of people are weird. The true Christians of this world, the lukewarm church, aren't true Christians at all. Anybody can just say, oh yeah, I'm a Christian, but it's all the fruit there. It's all the fruit. Yes, it's unnatural. It's, it's, it's unnatural. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 6, but it's also um, Ezekiel as well. And uh, 
this is the, this is the Old Testament as well, but nothing changes, and it's only because it, it goes against what he created. It goes against the, the natural forms of men and women and life of repro reproduction. But it's, it's, it's all the facts. It's, it's, it's a, if a man ejaculates into a man, the semen still searches for a female egg. So nobody can actually say that they're born gay. It's just the own, they've been deceived. That's what it is. When you see a, a, a big movement of people that have been just deceived and just want to carry, I can tell by what you said beforehand when I said you probably have sex with a donkey. Because of that, it's all coming. I can see it's all coming by lust and the desires of the flesh, and we don't have to do that. And I can tell that because you think abortion is good and you're standing firm in that, and you hate God and you hate Christians, he will have the end of it, and he will he will have the final say, and you will weep and gnash your teeth for eternity in, in hell and in the lake of fire and brimstone if you do not repent and believe. And this is your warning. You've, I'm sure you've been warned multiple, multiple, multiple times. So you, have, you know, that's what you want when you die and you face God. There's going to be nothing left to say. He's going to give you what you want. If you think the murdering of innocent children and babies and homosexuality, and you think that saying "f Christ," you think that you're gonna, you think that you're gonna reap good consequences for that? Do you not think that He's gonna toss you in the lake of fire and brimstone for that? If that's what you want, if that's what you want to embrace and go after, then He is going to give you that, and you're gonna be nothing. There's gonna be nothing left to say. Don't die and stand in front of God and cry, Lord, I'm so sorry. I was so wrong. Please help me. Oh, I'm so sorry now. Remember that when you die and you face God, remember what you said. Remember you said F Him. Remember that you said you like to be gay. Remember that you said you like abortions remember everything you said when you die and you face god and he brings this this whole conversation there'll be nothing left to say you're just gonna stand there i'm sure oh i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i never meant to persecute you and mock you and hate you for fun because my heart's so wicked my life's so wicked and i just want to make everybody else's miserable as well and that's why i come on the chat apps and just talk crap to everybody and try and uh persecute mock christians but you still can't even deny it you can't prove it and all the actions and the fruit's still there i can i can see it you can hide behind the camera all you want but christ still sees it god still sees it and he knows everything you want to go to hell well then why aren't you then if you want to go to hell so bad then why aren't you it's because you don't want to die you can't so even though you might think so, and then you embrace the devil and you worship the father of lies, then why are you doing anything about it? So you just talk the talk. I do. Is that why you're still alive? Is that why you're still living? You like to embrace the father of lies, the father of murder. Then you're going to get what he gets coming. You're going to have it. And there's going to be nothing left to say. Our God is a God of righteousness, of mercy, of justice. If we give in to him, if we repent, he will forgive us. There's still time. But remember this. You're going to have to give an account. And if you want to embrace it, you're going to get what the enemy gets. If you want to go after the father of lies, the father of murder, then don't cry. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. When it happens, you're going to get the lake of fire and brimstone because there's consequences. And then you can't deny it. Why don't you just give your life to Christ? Why don't you stop running? Why don't you just try it? Like, if, what's the point? You clearly want everything else and it's not working for you. You got to the point of attempted suicide. Clearly Satan is not doing anything for you. He's not satisfying because he's not a, not a God at all. He's just a created angel. He's not even an archangel. And he can never do anything for you. So why don't you stop running from God? Yeah, you can choose whatever religion you want, but you're still going to go through these things. You wonder why your life is how it is. You wonder why you're so sad. You wonder why you attempt suicide. It's because of what you're facing and what you're going after and choosing to go after. So why don't you stop running from God and give into the true living God and be saved? It's not religion. Stop forcing your religion on me. You're sitting here talk, telling tales, Satan, worship Satan. Stop forcing your religion on me. Stop telling me about your suicide. Stop, stop telling me about all your problems and I'll stop trying to help you.
you know? Like, is that all you got? Why don't you just give your life to Christ and be saved and stop being so prideful? You said you want to go to hell and you want to burn. If you truly wanted to die and go to hell, you would have. It's the end of the story. You can say whatever you want. You can lie and say whatever you want. Just trying to make this all about, oh, look at me. You're not in a mental hospital. I don't believe you. So just show the camera around. Yeah, that's your bedroom. I just saw the blue on your wall. It's your bedroom. Yeah. It's just sad. You know, you gotta lie about about that, but I mean maybe maybe it happened in the past. Maybe not. I've been there before. I did multiple times. I've been there. Why don't you just stop running and give it a shot? So this actually will actually work for you, do something for you. You'll actually feel it. Oh, he does so much for me, bro. It's amazing. It's amazing. Just a quick testimony. Even my dog. He works for me and my dog. They wanted to put my dog down because he has such bad epilepsy. There's nothing that could ever do anything for him. So many brain scans, so many tests, no medicine. But the Lord Jesus Christ saved him. And he's my family. And that's just my dog, bro. So if you want to go down the list of what he's doing for me in my life and what he's doing for others, we can, we can do that. And he can, he can do that for you. Why would I let my dog go through that? What do you mean? My dog is healed now because of Christ. Are you not listening? He has epilepsy. He was born with epilepsy. Nobody could tell him. No doctors, no medicine, nothing except for Jesus Christ. And that's just my dog. So you're saying that God doesn't do anything for me. It's sad. So much to the point to where I take my time. I come out here and try and reach the lost because I love him so much. Because I'm serving him so much. And it's not about me. It's just about him. So he does so much for me. The devil doesn't help you. Is that why you're in a mental hospital? And why you tried to commit suicide? And why abortion is good? <laughs> Please give me a break. Is that all you have? You have no fruit. The devil hears your prayer. Stop. What has the devil done for you? Please. Please tell me. What has the father of lies, the father of murder and abortion done for you? Everything, everything. That's just the typical facts. So I'm here to tell you just to repent or you're going to burn in hell for eternity along with the fake false God that you serve. And you're running out of time. And this is God once again showing you that not even on the chat apps can you run from him. And you're going to have to give an account. And when you die and you face him, at least you repent. Remember this. He's going to bring all this up. We're going to have to give an account for the words, for the thoughts, for the text messages. So you remember this. And when you say you want to burn, when you want you say you, you want to die and you want to be in hell, just remember that. Just remember that because there's going to be nothing left to say. But just know, because I know that you're just doing this out of anger because you're angry at God for some reason. Something must have happened when you were a child or happened to your family that you're so angry at God, but it's not his fault because we're not robots. He didn't design us a specific way. He gives us free will. Men and women choose to go after wickedness and then people blame that wickedness on God. So it's not his fault. It's the enemy's fault. Oh, well, if he did, he wouldn't have sent his son and he wouldn't be living through our lives and changing people rapidly throughout the world. So you can say whatever you want. If you were to believe in science, you wouldn't believe in Christianity because everything that the Bible says is based off of science. So if you want to go off of evolution, that's not science. The own definition of science disproves evolution. It says by observation. Have you ever seen anybody uh, evolve? And why are monkeys still here? So science is actually on the, on the back of, of, of Christianity and the Old Testament itself. So you can try. I mean, we can go all day. And we can prove from the standard evidence to the spiritual evidence, from the Bible prophecy, we have everything. You'll never be able to, to prove it. You can say whatever you want. You won't, you won't be able to prove it. 
You're sitting here telling me you worship the father of, of dark magic, the father of illusions and deceptions, and you're telling me that the word of God is magic, but yet you won't give me a single verse or won't show me anything? Yeah, see, and it's just, it's just wicked, and I just pray for you. I pray for your soul, that your soul just doesn't end up in hell. So God bless you. And we can be saved. And Christ has shown us and shown us what true love is and showed us that true love on the cross. And if we want to give in to wickedness, if we want to go after the devil, if we want to go after sin, and we die and we face God, there's going to be nothing left to say. He's going to give us that. If we want to come on these chat apps showing our privates to whoever, children, elderly, it doesn't matter. And when we die and we face God in our sins, he's going to give us that. And there's going to be nothing left to say. And ultimately, that's just what it comes down to. That's what he's trying to wake us up, trying to show us. You're living in the book of Revelations, literally, right now, with the end times, everything that he had prophesied about. And we're running out of time. But the, 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 every day that we have for the short moment is his mercy, because he loves us. He wants us to see. He wants us to show us that the world is how it is because of sin. And we have to go through this because of sin, but this isn't was it, how it was originally supposed to be. It wasn't supposed to be like this. But men and women chose to go after sin, embrace it, love wickedness, and this is why how it is. It's the end times. And he's so loved, he's so mercy that if we just call out to him and believe, and just, just repent of our sins, we'll be saved. He's right there at the door knocking. He's not going to force himself on anybody. True love doesn't force himself. It allows them to let him go, and if they love, they seek and come back. So he's right there at the door knocking. He says, if you open the door, he will come in and dine with you. But we're running out of time. We have to understand that our life has purpose, has meaning and value in Christ, but only in Christ, and we are running out of time. And he had showed us what true love is, and it showed us that there's life beyond the grave, which is amazing, because him raising not only showed the perfect love, forgiveness, mercy of God, but showed us that there's life beyond the grave, too. And that's why he says, when the greatest commandment is love your neighbor, love the Lord God with all your heart, all your soul and mind. And love your neighbor as yourself is the second. He proved that on the cross. He showed that on the cross. And that's because he is the visible image of the invisible God. We can now see God through Christ. And he had showed us everything, every aspect, how to pray, how to live. Showed us what true love is because you have this fake false movement in the world that says, oh yeah, love is love. But love is not love. Love is not murder. Love is not rape. They steal from our worldview. The only standard we have is off of God's law, God's word. That's why the court and justice systems are set up off of the word of God. If you murder, if you steal, you name it. It's because it's the only standard. So when they say, oh yeah, we love, we feel what's in our heart, they're stealing from our worldview. It's the standard that we have. It's a Hebrews chapter 13. He wrote the laws on our hearts. So when we feel something, we feel remorse. We feel guilt. We feel happiness. You name it. But they don't have anything else besides the word of God to show us what true love is because he is love. It's First John chapter 4, verse 8. This is that God is love. And then it's by everything that he showed us. It's by First Corinthians. Love is patient. Love is kind. It's never self-seeking. It's never self-boasting. And it serves. Christ came to serve, not to be served. He gave his life so that we would never have to. Yeah, you need to repent. And we can be saved. And it's all by him. And it's all, we can be free by the blood of Christ, but there has to be a consequence, there has to be a wage, and he paid that on the cross by his blood. And if we choose not to accept that gift of salvation, then we're going to have to give and give our way, we're going to have to pay the wages, pay the consequences, which God created everything so there's nothing that we could ever give him, and he's an eternal being. And when we sin against the Holy God, we get the consequences, so the time will be eternity. So there will be nothing left to say. And besides everything that you see today, life itself, you wake up. He's giving you an opportunity, giving you a chance daily to search after him, seek after him, find him. Because if you did, you would. If you knocked, the door would be answered. And we're running out of time, but we can be saved, and we can be saved in Christ. So... Yeah, we just need to repent. We just need to repent and believe, and we'll be saved. And that's it. There's too many people that just don't know their life has value, has purpose, has meaning, and that we're running out of time. So if we just believe in Christ, call upon him, we will be saved. God bless you.